Coming up on this Linux Gamecast Weekly is HappyPenguin.org kaput. Synoptic releases vehicle gameplay. Left 4 Dead 2 is running on integrated Intel HD graphics. And we discuss, did the Prometheus run Windows? Let's go. <music> And welcome back to, well, another Linux Gamecast Weekly. I believe this is episode four, but technically it's episode five. And joining me, as always, is the man of many patience, of much patience, Jordan. I, I have many patients. Yes, yes, many patients. For I am a doctor. No, here's the thing. We recorded this last night, and man, I really um, cocked it up seriously. It's cocked it up. That that's one way to describe it. Yes. Yeah, we did the whole thing, and very insultingly, the video recorded and switching everything else went fine, but it only recorded one side of the audio conversation, and that would have been difficult to listen to, I believe. So we're back. And we have some fun things to maybe talk about. So let's get into that. And the first thing is something that everyone has asked me about for the past week. And that's what we're using. And what we're using is nothing at this point. It's a collection of scripts that half work. And like last night, you never really... Like last night. Right. Like last night. You want to rub that in a little more? Oh, yes. No. I, I plan to. The, oh, okay. the, enti the entire podcast. I'm just going to rub this in. That's, this is going to be great. I'm going to have a blast. Love. But right now, I mean, in the state of... Right it, now. Right, right now, now, we're talking about vengeance. Vengeance. And just to gloss over it. You have to brute force it. We're using FFmpeg, and that is... Not the cleanest way to do things, but it works. Um, just this basic recording. Not even the overhead. Um, going back and forth between me and Jordan. Mm -hmm. 720p recording. Quad-core 3 gigahertz processor. Using right now, completely pegged. All cores 98 plus percent. So, I'm going to need even more than what we have if we're going to do a live stream on top of it. Just want to get that out of the way. I will release um, what we have once I can get it into a manageable package. Because um, even before this, we had another audio problem, which we should bring up because we're going to talk about what we're using for Jordan's video. Google Plus. Google Plus. And just getting everything set back up, knowing exactly how to do it, took 15 to 20 minutes, which is non optimal. But about Google Plus, people seem to not think it is. What's the word? A viable alternative to Skype? Or no, it's I I don't get why people are having, especially on Linux, why people are having a lot of problems with Google Plus. I mean, it worked out of the box for me. And I guess we should say that we're doing a Linux to Linux end to end, but that really shouldn't make a difference, should it? No, it really shouldn't. I mean, Google writes the plugin for everything, so it should get like cons consistent results across any platform. Um, not had any problems with it except for today because it was feeding audio back and I had to just completely mm -hmm. um, shut down all things Googs and bring it back up. But after that, it worked. You know, I tried cutting it off and cutting it back on again, and that was met with some amount of success. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But there is something, um, before we get into Linux gaming, is headphones. Headphones. The infamous headphone rant. No, it's not Go, infamous. Ben, go. Preach it. Ah, preach, preach it. Can I get a raw man? Raw man. Raw man. But are you an audiophile, Jordan? I am not an audiophile. I, not by any stretch. Wouldn't even consider yourself close to an audio file. I buy cheap headphones because I can't bring, I can't justify to myself buying like a three hundred dollar pair of headphones that are just going to break or that I'm going to have to replace eventually. I just can't, I can't rationalize it. What type of headphones are those? You told me these are uh, these are Plantronics Gamescom headphones. Okay. 
that I bought on sale about a year and a bit ago. And they're great. I love them. They're, they, they sound great. Uh, they work under Linux. USB? They have a little, yeah, USB. They have a USB sound card. Um, yeah, it's pre- and it's pretty resilient too. I've raged on this thing a couple times, and it's in pretty good shape. Right on. And so it did, and I mean, like, I sound fine coming out of speaking into the microphone. So no, they sound great. Good. Um, I, I pay. I paid seventy bucks for that. So that's not bad at all. But on that topic, this is something I realized. I am not an audiophile either. Um, no. The headphones I've used most of the time, um, what you're seeing here, are these um, Logitech little portable deals, kind of like yours, a smaller version. They're a travel size. And I think I paid like $70 for these, and I've used these just for uh, monitors for years. Never realized how good they sound until I tried to buy a $20 set of headphones, and this is what I ended up with. Skull Candy. But skull candy is bad. I mean, that's the you should know that going in. Well, I don't normally think about headphones. I bought these these little critters just as in ear monitors for what we're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Nothing more. Didn't expect anything from them, and I thought they were broken. They sounded so bad, and I gave them to someone else, and they said, "No, that's how they sound." So, ended up with these, which were about. $30, but the moral of this story is always, always just buy cheap headphones so you don't um, end up knowing what good ones sound like, because it's, it's a horrible expensive mm. bit. But $70 Plantronics, you can't go wrong with those. And these yep. little Philips were about $30, and they're completely acceptable. They don't sound great, and I wouldn't use them for gaming or movies. But you know what, Jordan? What? This isn't Linux Headset Weekly. It should be, though. Really? I'm having a blast talking about headphones. That is really kind of an interesting topic, but, you know, we're going to have to pry ourselves. But, but this is Linux Gamecast Weekly, yeah. so I guess we have to move on. Gotta ruin my fun. <sighs> well, I have to get back at you some way, so... Speaking of that, Linux Gaming... It is out, and when I say it's out, I mean Black Mesa. I think you had a chance to play this the other night, didn't you? I did. I had left it downloading over the weekend, and then I installed it Sunday night and started playing. And so far, uh, I like it. It's it, it's like a really up-to-date version of Half-Life. And I, I like that it has little nods to Half-Life 2 in there, and... Oh, uh, you know what? I I I'm I'm gonna play through it. I'm gonna, it, it it's definitely it's definitely a nostalgia bomb. That's, That's what it is. Yeah, and definitely nostalgia something I was uh, talking to Josh Waltrith um, from PC Per this morning about. I said there was a good thirty minutes of just nostalgic hard with the tram ride. Yeah, with, you know what? I think one of the I think one of the doctors is Harrison Ford from The Fugitive. Oh, right on. But after that, and things get all head crabby, it basically turns into your um, platform turns into jumping Half-Life. game. So, yeah, it's Half-Life. Looks mm-hmm. fun. And what we've done is really just stuck together a quick guide for installing Black Mesa with uh, Steam using Wine Tricks. Piece of cake couldn't be more simple if you've never had any experience doing this. You can follow this guide. It's about seven minutes long and have this up and running on pretty much any um, Ubuntu or Debian-based system. You can adapt it for Fedora or even Arch if you want to. You have to say Arch. You just can't say Arch. No, because I don't use Arch. No. Arch is the best um, thing ever made, period. Don't you know that? I use Slackware. Yeah. I like Slackware mainly because it's as user-friendly as a coiled rattlesnake. Exactly. So, that's cool. Check that out at linuxgamecast.com. And since we are on Steam, 
Let's talk Shame. about green lights. Not yellow lights, purple lights, or even blue lights, but green lights. And Green lights. Yeah. Um, last week, I think we might have talked about it, or the week before that, um, a user had put together a list of games coming out with native clients on Steam. Um, who was that? Uh, user FKB came, came out. He had about 70 plus entries, and he did say that it was going to be a very useful list until Valve adds a um, Linux option for the search. And look, here it is. So, mm -hmm. how many entries do we have at current? Three pages, 82 entries, and just something that stopped me cold in my tracks. Check this out. Euro Truck Simulator 2 is coming to Linux. Jordan. I'm sorry, I'm I'm too busy creaming my jeans at, uh, at at the at the news of that. Euro Truck Simulator, two, not not just one. They're going to give us part two. Oh man, this is like a dream come true. It it really is. It's more simulating of your trucks in Euro, and uh... I I I. It, Gaming over. Like, we've, we've reached the peak of Game what over, gaming can be. But I'm happy to see some other things on there. Nebulous uh, mm -hmm. played that when it was um, rolling around in its beta phases. Asylum, I played a little bit of that, and it's coming out later this year. And several indie games, which is nothing wrong mm -hmm. with indie games. There's just a bunch of them. I'm kind of looking for AAA titles, not seeing them right now, but I think Postal we'll, 2. Uh, share the pain. That'll yes. be a good one. So keep an eye on that, and that's at steamcommunity.com forward slash green light. Give that a look when you get a chance, and we're just going to keep on with our weekly Steam update, and that's... Weekly Steam update, update, update. I'm so not above um, isolating that and echoing it and using it from now on. Go for it. Now, it's just yours. Just letting you know, just so there's no it, surprises it, it's next yours. week. Go, oh, take okay. it. But, Left 4 Dead, um, running natively, and the cool thing is it's running natively on the um, integrated Intel HD graphics. Yeah, the IGP. Yeah, the, it, it, it's pretty cool. Frame rate's not crazy, but hey, it, it'll get better. It'll get better, and considering what it's running on, that you can tell they have the detail cut down a little bit. But plus, uh, plus next year's Intel cores are going to have uh, pretty good GPUs, so this is going to get even better. Yeah, I remember reading something about the next generation of Intel um, GPUs, and like always, they're going to be completely open source, right? Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna open the drivers up so that you can run Linux out of the box on them, which is pretty cool. Man, that's just fantastic. But you can check it that is. video out um, at linuxgamecast.com. And rolling up to this next bit, because we're on first-person shooting the game, which I can't pronounce. So not There are many games you can't pronounce. Yeah, there's two. Be fair. But it is something kind of cool with these guys. They've been around for a while, but I haven't seen this in... Um, an open source uh, free to play game yet, and that is vehicles. And just to read from the three, site here, two. let's mute that so we don't hear it. I think it's a three, little... two. No, no, we should three, play the video. Two. Mute. Let's get Can into Can you some... tell this is recorded in one take? Oh, yes. I don't know. People might not believe us, but. Um, Check this out. Um, Eowyn wrote, um, I've been playing Xenotic. Um, this is the MON vehicle gameplay server, and he's quite enjoying it. But that is just cool. It looks like fun. I haven't had a chance to play this yet. This is the uh, Unsealed Trial 2 vehicle CTF long play. Want to give that a shot. And that's definitely not something that's easy to pull off in a game, and I'm sure there's... um. Tons of people just dying to um, send some feedback to tell let's me how... Let's go frag some noobs. Yeah, let's go frag some noobs. Let's go frag some noobs. You know what would be really fun? Setting An old up, school land party? Yes, but maybe old school land party on, I don't know, Quake 1. 
Or maybe we school. should try Xenotic with its new vehicles. Hmm. Will that be considered an old school land party? Well, I meant old school is everyone like grabs their PCs and uh, crams into like a big room and plays video games. Plenty of CTF funk to be had for everyone after that. Indeed. Man. Yeah, it's not as bad as con funk, but CTF um, and DM funk, uh, close rival, close rival. Indeed. Well, it's hot computers and sweaty nerds. Yes. And the smell of it's Cheetos and Mountain Dew wafts through the air. It's a fantastic Indeed. thing. It, it, it's such a smell. I wish Febreze would bottle it and sell it as a spray. <laughs> or a mace alternative. <laughs> but let's keep rolling with this. And this is a bit of a sad note because I still haven't heard back, um, even as time of recording this and recording last night. And that's one of the first Linux gaming sites I knew about, um, happypenguin.org. And I don't know if um, whoever's running the site has just been busy with something else, but it hasn't been updated since um, June 3rd of this year. And that just worries me a little bit. If anyone knows, I don't want to spend a long time on this, what's going on, I can't get a response. Um, you might remember... Um, Earlier this year, it might have been late last year, Happy Penguin had a complete crash and they were down for four or five months where everything got rebuilt and functionality was restored. So I would hate to see that project dead. But do you want to hear something kind of neat, Jordan? What? Tell me then. I was talking to the founder of LinuxGames.com. You have to be kind of forward thinking to end up with that domain because mm -hmm. it would registered some time ago um, the founder Crusader has already agreed to come on our show really now? yeah I was talking to him with the um, tweeter nets on the interweb. on the twitterverse yeah and he wrote me back and he was like yeah it sounds cool um, we thought about doing it tonight but there's just no way with um, scheduling and the time he was going to be available but mm -hmm. Maybe this weekend we'll get everyone together. And Maybe for episode five. That would be kind of neat. And ask them what it's like to have the Linux gaming site for... What's it like to own that domain? It's just Does like, it make you feel powerful? Something I was reading, you know, in 2099, 2001. It's just... Way like, back when I was in diapers. Yes, and I was just legal to drink alcohol. Good times, good times for all. But, do you remember that um, brilliant move the game Ryza made? The You mean the most epic marketing maneuver in the history of marketing? These guys are geniuses, okay. Or they epic are. trolls, one way or the other. If you don't recall, um, they had this idea to merge all of their servers together, but guess what? This is a feature. We're taking cues Not from a Microsoft. You lose your username and all of your level progression because F you, that's why. No way around it. But they came up with a solution, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah, check this out. Um, you can keep your username and your password. Password, of course, that would make sense. But your level progress, if, wait for it, you pay the monies. Oh, my God. That is the most inspired thing I have ever heard. My feeble brain is crushed under the weight of the genius of that. I'm just terrified, petrified, and stupefied. The, the brilliance of this, they've magically come up with a way to work out this impossible issue in exchange well, for money. wet, stinky cash. Didn't see that coming. Here is the thing, though. You have two options. If you have a paid account, you're golden. Basically, that means you're already giving them the wet, stinky cash. But if you don't, there is a chance to possibly save your username. But your level progression, they're going to nix that. Game over, man. Game over, so... Yeah, that game's dead. With the Or it's going to overtake World of Warcraft instantaneously. I don't know, it's 50-50 right now. Yeah. Yeah, there's really no way to call that. 
No. I, 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 I'm still just floored by the, the, the sheer genius of this. I don't have anything to add to that. You, that's the most eloquent way to put it. Floored. Floored. So, let's roll to something that is... We're going to have to make this Linux-related, so bear with us, because we want to talk about it. Can we just pretend that the Prometheus was running Linux? Well, like I said in the previous recording, and I feel it needs What previous recording? This is the Shut first time you. we've done this. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. But as I was saying, if the Prometheus was running Linux, perhaps it should have been running li Windows, because then everyone would have survived. You're saying it wouldn't have crashed? I'm saying it wouldn't have taken off. It wouldn't have taken off. <laughs> and everyone would have lived their lives happily and not face-fucked. So they would still be on Earth and yes. unable to travel. The no, no giant Namekians. No Namekians. So but for them to worry about. The reason we're bringing this up, I started watching. I got about halfway through it. That's a long movie, man. What is it, almost three hours? It's it's not three hours. It is a hundred and thirty-three minutes. Twenty-four minutes. minutes. Hundred and twenty-four minutes. It's long. Didn't finish it, and I we were talking, and you said you need to just go ahead and finish it and form your opinion of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have an opinion of it. Well, impart that to me, then. Sock it to me. The hell, man. That's, that's kind of my official bit on that. Because I had to immediately go and look up. They're making more of these, right? And guess what? They are. Yeah. Yeah. They want to expand on this story. But the one thing that genuinely pissed me off for the entire movie, I mean, it was a Ridley Scott movie. I wasn't expecting much. It's like when you watch Transformers. It's robots beating each other up. You expect that? And racism. And racism. Scalding, gripping yeah. racism. That sounds like, um, with that lens flares. sounds flares. like Michael Bay. Yeah, with lens flares. But the only thing that really offed me about um, Prometheus was right at the end when the Demekian was coming back in to kill the lady, right? Mm -hmm. And this is before the giant squid thingy got out. They, ah, yes. They the show attack of the killer yeah, clitoris. A closed blast door that you could clearly see light through. It had a visible crack down the middle of it, and it was perfectly functional. That That's my biggest complaint with the movie. I had a little bit of a... I think it fails on a more fundamental uh, level than that. Well, My problem with Prometheus is that it had so much promise and didn't pay out. I think it was just overhyped. And like, it, if, if it were a bad movie, possibly I could just enjoy it for being a bad movie. Or I could have just blamed it on sheer incompetence. No, competence was there, but it was just so mediocre. I just forgot about it. Um, I, have to, I have to struggle to remember what happened in that movie. It's just so for, forgettable. And to mm, me, that is like the greatest offense. I, uh, okay, we've spent too much time on our non-Linux subjects. Non-Linux subjects. Well, even though... Prometheus sucks. Prometheus, Boo. Boo! Rotten Tomatoes, man. Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I do have some interesting news. Oh, yeah? So, I don't know if I told you or not... Um, I submitted our video version of Linux Gamecast Weekly to the iStore with the iThings, where they are played the on. the iPeople. Yes. Every, the unique people, the ones who are all really the same. They, they, they think differently. They, they do think differently. I, I'll give you that. They absolutely think differently. Um, we got approved. Just got that. Uh, oh, in. Yeah. that's good. So that brings us to an MP3 version and SD video. I'll probably roll the HD video out this weekend when I get some time. So to... you can see our lovely faces in glorious you can see high our definition. Pores, man. I mean, pores. Yes. Get to see what's living in my face. In my face. It'll be good stuff. But good in addition stuff. to that, not only can you grab us on iTunes, check us out at. LinuxGameCast.com. We're on YouTube, um, forward slash Linux Gamecast. Scream at us in the forums if you have any questions, or if you're just a little lonely. You can contact Jordan on the Twitters at The Burning Fool, 
and I'm cleverly disguised, as always, under Vin Stone. So, Jordan, man, I think that's going to wrap it up for episode one, two, three, four? Four. Quattro. All right. And we'll see you guys later. Cue outro music and wave awkwardly. Wah! See you next week. <laughs>